Christian hit me up and said, quarterbacks and offensive players are the typical favorites to win the Heisman every year. But is there a defensive player you think could make a case this year? If so, why? Uh, from Woodstock, Georgia. Yes, I've got one, two, three, four, five of them. This is never going to happen. But you need to let me dream on this. Travis Hunter is the most dynamic player in college football right now. Plays both ways. Uh, phenomenal corner. I still am not sure how the NFL views him. I've heard reports, but like I'm really interested to see how the NFL conversation evolves with him this year. But then again, I'm not because I'm a college football guy. Travis Hunter, yeah, if Colorado especially overachieves record-wise this year, he would be a prime candidate, probably in terms of being dynamic, the most likely candidate to be a defensive Heisman guy because it wouldn't just be defense for him. Caleb Downs is another defensive back that I think I need to put in this conversation. So Caleb Downs is at Ohio State by way of Alabama. Caleb Downs, the only thing that I'm waiting to hear about from him is, is he a good fit at Ohio State? Like, do they plug him in that defense and have him look like the star that he is? Because if it's a good fit up there, like if the puzzle pieces connect, the football part takes care of itself. He's one of the best football players in the country last year as a true freshman at Alabama and will be the exact same, if not better, as a sophomore stud in every sense of the word. So Caleb Downs, if Ohio State is a team that wins this year and they are a defensive-minded team, both of which could very well happen, maybe Caleb Downs is the face of that. In a related note, what if LSU is better than expected defensively this year? LSU brought in an, almost an entirely new defensive staff. I'm big fans of the guys virtually across the board. Harold Perkins felt like he disappeared on us last year through no fault of his own. Um, what if he has sort of a resurgent year this year? The raw talent's there. No one doubts that. Or if you do, it's very, very ill-advised. But what if that new coaching staff utilizes him in a way that sees him burst back on the national scene? And then maybe that coincides with LSU making a little run in the SEC. If he's the face of that, I could see Harold Perkins being right back in that conversation. But I'll tell you, you're talking about being the face of something? Imagine with me here. Imagine a world where Miami's back. Is everyone with me? No. I, I think I already lost some of you. Okay. Well, like I said, just give me benefit of the doubt here. For the sake of argument, imagine a world, it's late November, Miami is clinching a trip to the ACC championship game, they go win the ACC, and Reuben Bain is the face of the team. The first part, you may doubt, but if you grant me that it could happen, how many other guys are equipped to be the face of that than Reuben Bain? Uh, he was one of the best players on the team. He was one of the best football players on their team last year as a freshman. I've been down there to watch a couple of their practices, and especially when they close those doors and you see that dude practice, it's incredible. Like you've seen him play. Just watching him practice. Watch him walk around the building with those other guys. I remember we were down there last year in, I think it was spring. And you're just kind of pointing out the most impressive physical specimens. And then you've got like Cam Gorby over here saying, freshman, freshman, freshman. But then you look at Bain and they go, yeah, yeah, he's different even than the rest of the freshmen. Well, what's his uh, sophomore performance this year look like? We'll see. It takes Miami being back. Part of that conversation is the team part and then the other part is the individual part. And James Pierce Jr. at Tennessee. Paper pop, because I think that's the least recognizable name on this list, but maybe not for long. He was already one of the highest graded players at defensive end in the country last year. I think PFF may have had him as the top graded defensive end in the SEC, but don't quote me on that, even though I irresponsibly said it. Don't quote me on that. It hit Bill Martin with any questions. He's set to become, I think, a household name this year. Now, this is probably the, uh, the biggest reach because if Tennessee has a good year this year, it's probably because offensively they were a juggernaut. And so it may not matter what James Pierce Jr. does. It will to us. But to a Heisman voter, there are Heisman voters who, if you've ever seen the movie Liar, Liar, all Jim Carrey needs to do is write a fib. He's trying to write on his arm on a piece of paper on his desk that the pen is blue and, and the pen keeps going crazy. That's what most Heisman voters pens would do if they tried to vote a defensive player number one. We all know this, but it doesn't hurt to dream.
I don't think. So those are five names I would look at if, if it were to happen, if the impossible were to happen. Those are the five names I'd look at.